Governor Castor proposes to revoke visa on arrival for Russian and Ukrainian citizens and a ban on tourists renting motorbikes in Bali. Stay tuned for details. This is a big one. Welcome to the latest news from Bali in Indonesia. This is March 13th, 2023, and my name is Bruce Slamat Siang. What's the weather like today in Bali? I'm afraid to say anything because when I say the weather is going to be terrible, it turns out to be great. And when I say it's going to be great, it starts raining right after I'm done with the video. Right now, it is 30.4 degrees Celsius, humidity 68% and the wind speed 19.8 kilometers per hour and it is overcast and cloudy and that's all i'm going to say about the weather today bali immigration has recently started deporting people for working illegally in bali as surfing instructors driving instructors photographers and a new one that came out as hookers and russian nationals have emerged recently as a dominant group among the illegal workers in bali according to immigration what else has there been? Robbery, theft, physical violence, fighting, making fake Indonesian identity cards, and of course driving with no helmet and mostly undressed. So just about the gamut of everything. And it's the news, it's everywhere, and it is spreading internationally now. And we're going to talk about that and how that is going to affect tourism in Bali, or will it? Let's start off with this one, and this is just out. I just came across this this morning, and this is from CNN. So this stuff is no longer just in the local press. It is international. Governor of Bali's action against naughty foreigners. Revoke VOA Russia. Stop motorbike rentals. Ah, covers both of the main <laughs> stories. So Pak Koster, the governor of Bali, has made a move to minimize naughty tourists or Bandel tourists, stubborn tourists who are in Bali and who are not following the rules in a number of ways, as I just mentioned. So the governor claims his party is taking action against foreign nationals or tourists who do f trouble, who make trouble uh, or misbehave, such as working illegally, not because this has gone viral on social media. He made a point of this several times in his comments the other day. He said, we're not doing this just because it's gone viral. We've had this plan in the works already. And so we're not just reacting. He said at the press conference yesterday, I want to make a note. I acted not because there was a virus. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was no influence from the virus. Oh, he means these things going viral. This is something we've been doing since COVID-19, he said, at a conference, uh, Regional Office of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights in Bali yesterday. However, he said, things can't be rushed. You have to have strong evidence and only then can things be acted upon. He said, we've been working on this for months. We're just not announcing this on social media. We're waiting until everything is put into place and all of the uh, applicable agencies have been put in the loop and have had their say. The government said he's proposing to the central government to revoke the granting of visas on arrival for Russian and Ukrainian citizens who wish to visit Bali. He said, I have written to the Ministry of Law and Human Rights and a copy to the Minister of Foreign Affairs to revoke visas on arrival for Russian and Ukrainian citizens who wish to come to Bali. He said the policy is important because of widespread reports that citizens from these two countries are committing violations in Bali under the guise of making tourist visits. Additionally, he said these citizens come from countries that are involved in a war and they don't want to be there. They want a safe haven and so they're coming to Bali. The governor added that the Revocation of the visa on arrival may not only affect Russian and Ukrainian citizens, but may affect citizens from other countries as well. Because he said Russians and Ukrainians are not the only ones making trouble. There are other people as well. And this week, I don't know, just in the last four days, I think, since I did the last video, there was French, English, American, um, Syrian, uh, Indian, Australian, so you've got the 
this, this went viral, this photo here, this woman allegedly from Australia, some Australians uh, disputing that point on social media, who, wow, her interaction, if you have not seen this, I would look it up and take a look. It is very, very uncomfortable watching. She is pointing her finger and yelling at the cops, using some little, a little bit of Indonesian, and the, the cops, well, <laughs> not just grab her and handcuff her and drag her away. A lot of cops showed up there trying to control the situation. So citizens from a number of countries are involved in this. Russians and Ukrainians just happen to be, I guess, at the lead of this, according to immigration, the governor and a number of other officials. The governor said the Ministry of Law and Human Rights will discuss with the Minister of Foreign Affairs whether these are the only two countries that are subject to the new policy or several other countries because now there are 86 countries that have been given visa on arrival. The head of the Immigration Division of the Bali Regional Office of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights, Baron Itchazan, said that from January to the 2nd of March, there were 22 foreigners in Bali who were prosecuted by immigration for violating immigration administration rules. Foreigners had the most with five people. Okay, not a huge amount, five out of 22, less than 25%. And additionally, not just revoking visa on arrival, prohibition of foreign tourists renting motorbikes. And there are so many stories out about this. I'm just using the CNN one. I had a bunch of other ones that I'd already gone through and read and gotten ready to use, but I'm just gonna take this one. So another policy that will be issued is a ban on foreign tourists renting motorbikes. The governor said the ban would be legalized in the form of a regional regulation, PERDA, so that it would have a stronger legal standing. So the tourists have to travel, travel, use cars from travel. It's no longer allowed to use motorbikes or anything that is not from a travel agent, the governor said. He explained that the regulation would be implemented starting this year in line with Bali, which is currently improving. And a number of people on social media have already questioned whether or not this would be legal. The governor said he's going to make it into a regional regulation, which is going to give it legal standing. I don't know. In responding to a question about why now, the governor said, why now? because we're currently cleaning up. If during the COVID-19 pandemic, it would be impossible for us to do that because there are no tourists. Now we are starting to organize it. So according to this prohibition, tourists would not be allowed to rent motorbikes anymore here. They would have to go on the back uh, of a motorbike driven by an Indonesian or they could rent a car. I don't know that I want people driving crazy with cars. Is that going to be any safer than having people drive crazy with motorbikes? Certainly would solve the problem of not wearing helmets in terms of driving around half undressed. Well, that's a different story. The governor also emphasized that the provincial government of Bali prohibits all type of economic businesses carried out by foreign tourists. Well, illegally, he said, regarding economic crimes, including those we prohibit from doing this type of business. Moreover, the visa is not for work, but a visa for tourism. It's not permissible to carry out business activities in Bali without the proper visa. And that's just not a regional thing in Bali, that's nationally. And as I mentioned in the last video, a task force is being organized with a number of different agencies involved and they are going to be looking for people doing things illegally, especially in the areas of Badung Regency, Gyanyar and Dempasar City. The governor said that's where most foreigners are. Think Changu, Ubud, Kuda, Semenyak, Legian, that tourist bubble there. So some people have said, what about the rules? Who knows what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do? Well, this is interesting. This showed up yesterday, and I don't know where this is going to be disseminated, but it's a list of, <laughs> of things you should not do while you're here. And I put this up on the screen here. Enjoying Bali for everyone's safety, comfort, and mutual respect. We ask you to follow some common sense rules. Always wear a helmet on a motorbike, number one. Avoid drunken and decent behavior in public. Some countries are getting a bad reputation for this. You know which countries they're talking about. Do not post offensive, vulgar pictures to social media. Confine skimpy beachwear to appropriate venues. Working without a visa is strictly prohibited. Immigration is working undercover to apprehend offenders. Respect the local people in our culture. As valued guests on our island, we hope you enjoy your stay and respect our rich culture. 
and some small print at the bottom here. Due to <laughs> several recent cases, the Balinese government has been forced to impose strict penalties for tourists violating its laws. Large fines and deportation will be imposed for offenders. And this is put out by the Bali Tourism Board. I don't know where it's going to be, but here is some of the main issues that are being touched upon with all of this fear. Now, one of the main stories was going to be all of the people who are getting involved in this, this steamrolling effect here of government officials talking about bad behavior. Well, Pak Luhut, furious, Luhut asked naughty foreigners to be prosecuted. Yes, Pak Luhut is in here with his two rupees again. The coordinator minister for maritime affairs and investment, Pak Luhut, asked the security forces and the government in Bali to be firm towards tourists or rogue foreign tourists who come to Bali. Moreover, so far, many tourists have disobeyed the rules and created problems that affect security and damage the image of Bali. According to Pak Luhut, regarding the problem of foreign tourists who've caused problems in Bali, he said the governor of Bali has been in communication with him. According to him, Bali does not need naughty foreign tourists. Don't let Bali be littered with naughty foreign tourists. Pak Luhut continued, regarding tourists, I've spoken with the governor. Naughty tourists are not needed in Bali, so if Bali is littered with naughty tourists and lots of trash, it will damage Bali. Therefore, Tourists who are naughty with careful research by police and security forces can leave here. And as I mentioned previously, the governor has been in meetings with the Bali police chief, the Ministry of Law and Human Rights, and other related officials for the task force, the SATGAS, that is going to handle these violations. Talking about going viral and the governor saying, we're not doing this just because this went viral and it's making us look like we're not doing anything. Immigration, report foreigners acting, not going viral. According to the Singaraja Office of Immigration, they've opened a hotline service or complaint room through several social media platforms. Residents are asked to report if they find foreigners breaking the law. The head of the office said that the supervision of foreigners could not be carried out op optimally because of limited personnel. For this reason, they've opened a 24-hour hotline that can be used by the public to turn foreigners in who are behaving badly. Complaints can also be made through social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or the Singaraja Immigration website and WhatsApp. He said, please report it to us. Don't make it go viral. He said, at this time, immigration is focusing on Karangasam because it is suspected that there are a number of foreigners who have diving training services working illegally. He said the results of sweep and bullying, still negative in Jimbrana. He said the area is deserted. <laughs> not many tourists there, I guess. Not many foreigners living there in Jimbrana. He said people who hold a tourist visa should spend their money when they come to Bali, not make money. If they come to work, they should have a kitas or a business visit visa. I don't think you can work if you've got a business visit visa or a kitas. You have to have another permit from manpower. And he stressed, and this is nice to hear, that so far no foreign nationals have been throwing tantrums in the immigration office in Singaraja. Thank God. And so a number of officials and departments here have said, stop making this stuff go viral. We don't like it. Report it to us first. Well, why? Because it makes them look bad. And is this going to go away? Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Just a quick mention of a couple of cases that I've just come up with. Russian foreigners bring marijuana and use fake passport in Bali, secured by joint team. So they got a guy coming in, a Russian guy coming, attempting to smuggle in marijuana. And he also had fake ID. Not good for him. And in another one that I wanted to talk about more, but I don't think I'm going to have time here today, is interesting case of hypnosis done allegedly by an Indian family who stole money. I think it was in Ubud, and they hypnotized one lady and got her money, and then they went to another shop and wanted her to look into their eyes and she wouldn't do it, and so they touched her on the shoulder, and bang, she went unconscious, and they robbed her too. 
Don't believe in hypnosis happening here. Happens here all the time. It has been going on as long as I've been here. And is it a real thing? I've seen people that have been hypnotized and have gotten rid of lots of money. How does this work? Don't ask me. I don't know. But yeah, it is a real thing. And so this is being investigated. It might sound strange to you if you're coming from a Western mindset, but apparently Indonesians are very easily hypnotized. Now here's something to balance all this out. Good luck. E Gusti Nurarai Airport is optimistic that in 2023 it will serve 20 million passengers. Okay, so you want to limit the number of foreigners who are coming in here because what, they're bad, they're behaving badly, but you want to bring more foreigners in because it brings in more money. What happened to quality tourists? What happened to the backpacker ban? I don't know. All this stuff, you know, it shoots up and then poof, it's like cut down, just like cutting the weeds down. So you never know what's happening here. I just... I don't, you get used to it. You get used to it. What can I say? The increase in tourist visits to Bali in 2023 is getting more exciting. In fact, e Gusti Nurarai Airport has recorded 1,364,843 air travelers, both domestically and internationally, through February 2023. In 2023, it's also optimistic it can provide services for 20 million passengers. That's domestic and international. During the month of February, there were 358,534 international passengers arriving and 366,565 international passengers departing through the airport. That number has the potential to increase with the opening of direct air flights to mainland China, according to a spokesperson for the airport. Based on records for February, the highest number of foreigners came from Australia, 78,128, followed by 28,367 Indians and 17,874 Russians. And who knows, we may see a drop in the number of Russians, although I imagine if the VOA is actually revoked for people from certain countries, they can still come in a number of other ways. They're just gonna have to pay a little more and it's gonna be not as convenient. And here is an environmental issue. I'm gonna finish up with this because I think this is gonna to go too long already. And I talked about this a few months ago when they started this, they're planting mangroves up here in North Bali. Well, doing it all over the island, but up here in North Bali, I'm interested in, right? Because I live here. 40% of mangroves fail to grow, unfortunately. As many as 2,000 mangrove trees planted on the seacoast of Western Buleng have failed to grow. The mangrove trees were swept away by high waves, which we've been having for months now and also less effective planting patterns in order to survive the extreme weather. The head of the Bulang Environmental Agency said that in 2022, 5,000 mangrove trees were planted in the coast of Pamutaran, but only 60% have survived 3,000. However, he said percentages is not that bad, it's pretty good in fact. According to him, coastal restoration in Buleng continues to be pursued, including on the coast of the city of Singaraja. Trial planting of mangroves on the coast of urban areas, to be precise, is going to be at Pidara Beach, Banyuasri Village, and many as 500 mangrove trees that were planted could not survive out of that group. He said in Pidara, the coastal conditions are all sand, so yesterday's trial failed. However, efforts to improve the coastal environment in urban areas will still be pursued, he said. The plan is to replant mangrove trees using potted media. This mangrove pl planting pattern will also collaborate with Undixa University here. He said, pots from organic waste is a medium for growing mangroves is being worked on by our friends at Undixa. Meanwhile, the 157.05 kilometer long stretch of coast of Buleng is in dire need of restoration. And so work is continuing on that. And let's hope that a lot of work gets done in the dry season about to come up. And that is it for today. And as I said before, you could see this stuff coming as bad behavior increasingly became prevalent and it was being put on social media and going viral of foreigners driving around half naked, 
what not wearing helmets, speeding, uh, all of the other things, the, a lot of mental health issues that uh, are going on here with foreigners who come to Bali. I don't know why that is. Maybe they've run out of money. Maybe they came here and they had mental health issues already. But once this gets started, it keeps going. And we are in an election year. Well, starting now, the election is still a year away. But every time we have an election coming up since democracy came to Indonesia, in my opinion, there's always been a focus on foreigners, foreigners doing bad things. So this is not going to go away. It's just going to get worse unless people really start to behave. The bad apples here, they make all of us look bad and they bring a lot of heat on all of us. It's this ban on motorbikes. Now what happens if there is in fact a ban on motorbikes? I don't know. Social media is going crazy about this today. I read through 600 comments about this. The overwhelming majority both Indonesians and foreigners, well, this is going to ruin tourism in Bali if tourists can't rent motorbikes. They'll go to Thailand or they'll go to Vietnam or they'll go to Cambodia or they'll go to Europe or somewhere else. Will that happen? Yeah, quite possibly. I don't know. You can get around without a motorbike. Some people, a few people said, let's bring back BMOs. Hey, we've always had BMOs here in Singaraja. BMOs everywhere here, and that is a good point though. Let's improve public transportation, making it easier for foreigners to get around on public transportation, not reliant only on taxis, which is somewhat of a controversial issue because some taxi drivers charge a lot of money, more money than people want to pay. Uh, that's called the taxi mafia. I don't like to use that term really, but it's called that way more public transportation with schedules published and easily accessible through social media, maybe in your hotel rooms, a little leaflet. Like this thing that the tourism board put out about do's and don'ts, have these things available for people when they show up and give them to them. This is one way to be proactive about getting people to behave here. At least you can say, look, you were warned and then you crack down on them. Comments about this are welcome. I'm sure there are going to be some. Just a reminder, there is an ITE law here, a strict one, and comments that I consider to be dangerous for me as a person who owns this channel will be deleted. You can, you can say negative stuff, but it's got to be done in a, a clear, logical, rational way. No swearing, no insulting government officials because that is against the law. So I would like to hear from you though. What do you think? Do you think that this ban on motorcycles is going to happen? I can't see this really happening. And what about the restrictions on the VOA for Russians and Ukrainians? And what about people from other countries? How are they going to decide if they're going to revoke their VOAs? A lot of questions here. And one of the comments which I really <laughs> really liked and of course I had been thinking about it too when I read it and she said this is just like my mom when she got mad at us when we were kids she just took stuff away from us right away because she was reacting and she was responding to the governor's comments about banning motorbikes for tourists and getting rid of the VOA for Russians and Ukrainians and yeah exactly I mean, you're a parent and your kids do something that really irritates you you're tired and stuff no more ice cream for the rest of your life <laughs> and teachers, you know, a couple of kids that act up in class and you go, okay, nobody's getting recess for today. Is the governor overreacting? Mm -hmm. I'll leave that for you to decide. My granddaughter, my grandson, and my next door neighbor, we went down to the Tamankota, the city park yesterday, and wow, it has really expanded from the last time we did a video on that. If you want to see how people really live Indonesians outside of the tourist bubble and all of this crazy bull that's going on in the island. Wow, I'm so glad I live in Singaraja. Take a check on that video. Um, I don't know. I hope you like it. And that's it. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Boy, we need some kindness right now. Stay safe. Follow the laws. See you next time.